Hey internet, Derek here. Um, we're gonna cut to the chase. Last night, as of when I recorded, or as I'm recording now, last night was Friday the 13th. So I watched and reviewed one of my favorite Friday the 13th films, Friday the 13th Part 4, a final chapter. And it's uploaded, so please go check it out. Tonight, being Saturday the 14th, as of this uploading, or this recording, I watched the movie called Saturday the 14th. This little film here. Now, I borrowed this from a friend of mine. I had never seen, I, I remember seeing one, yeah, look at that fucking thing. I remember one scene of this movie when I was a young kid, like when it came out. Um, I rented it, like, on video. This came out in 1981. Shit. So, who knows when I rented it. You know, I was born in 81. But I was real, real young. Um, I remember nothing of this film other than, you know, that one scene, which I'll discuss in my review. And, you know, all I know is it's, you know, it's notoriety of being cheesy, you know, at this time. In the fucking 80s, there were so many cheesy movies, you know, in the horror comedy genre. Like... Uh, Transylvania 6, 5,000, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, all this stuff. And then I watched the trailer of this, and I'm like, this is, looks like complete shit. But I, I didn't watch it. And then I found out one of my friends had the film on DVD, and I made the stupid decision of watching it. Man, this movie's crap. Um, yeah. I expected a lot worse. But man, this movie was not fun at all. I am, you know, first off, the best thing of this movie here, best thing of Saturday the 14th is it's only an hour and 18 minutes. Right now I'm on my fifth beer, and this, the beer did not help this film at all for me. No enjoyment came due to the beer, which is sad. But anyways, we'll get into that now. Saturday the 14th, the plot is, you know, I don't give a fuck about spoilers. Usually I warn you guys in the beginning. I don't care right now. Um, what's his face? I don't even know the fucking characters' names. You know, I know the young son's name is Billy. Anyways, Richard Benjamin and Paula Prentice, the two main characters, move into an old house that they got from one... Someone's family member dying. I don't know if it's the father or the or the mother's family member dying. They move into this old house because they get it from from um, a will, you know, someone's will. Move in with their two kids, and their little shithead son finds a book called the Book of Evil, and it's literally called the Book of Evil. And he reads it, and as he's reading it, the first thing it says is, "You thought." Friday the 13th was bad. Saturday the 14th is going to be much worse. Okay. And as he's reading this book, every time he gets to a picture, the creature in the book, like the picture, disappears from the picture and it shows up, you know, somewhere around the house. Okay. And basically, they're there to get this book. And a side story is Jeffrey Tambor. If you know Jeffrey Tambor, he's in the Hellboy movies. He's in, um, I guess he's in Arrested Development. He's in There's Something About Mary. He plays, well, he plays a vampire of sorts. This is obviously not him, but, you know, I guess his character. He plays a vampire of sorts who is also after the book. And, you know, eventually, you know, basically it's the family defending themselves against the monsters. Eventually some fat dude... Um, who is apparently Abraham Van Helsing shows up, also wanting to protect the family, get the book, blah, blah, blah. Final showdown between Jeffrey Tambor, the uh, the vampire, and Van Helsing, and I just, I'm just waiting for this film to be over. Uh, yeah, that's it. Um, this movie wasn't funny at all. I did not like any of the jokes, really. I thought... It, the reason, I knew I was in for some shit when we first, well first it starts off with Jeffrey Tambor, the vampire, and his vampire wife or girlfriend or what the fuck ever, and they're trying to get into, you know, trying to find a way to get into the house. 
they find out that they they can't buy the house because they because this family you know got it from the will of the relative and I know I'm in for some shit is when we first meet the family or at least the mother and the father um, it's at the will reading and the guy reading the wills says you know um, let's just say Aunt B died okay and Aunt B is you know wants to you know is talking to like her sister Ethel we'll just say it doesn't matter and basically according to the will sister Ethel always borrowed things and you know she never returned so basically I'm leaving you with all like my overdue library books or some shit like that something stupid and then he proceeds to in one final thought she wanted me to give you the raspberry so he sticks his tongue out you know <laughs> that whole thing fucking dumb and then we get to you know he reads the will saying that you know this family gets the house and then he keels over dead you know really bad like grabbing his neck like <laughs> you know real bad you know acting choking <sighs> bad so the family moves in and I did like how when, they, when the family first moves in, they don't know what they're getting. They think they're getting a nice house, which the first house they see is literally the house from uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And they do live on Elm Street, so that was a cool nod. And when they meet, when they finally meet, you know, Fat Van Helsing, he lights a candle, and the candle is the shape of uh, the Pazuzu statue from uh, Exorcist. So those little nods are kind of neat. However... The rest, of the, the rest of the film is not neat. Um, you know, they, they see the weird surrounding, you know, the weird things that are happening in the house. The, uh, the TV only gets uh, a channel that plays the Twilight Zone. Um, when they flick on the light switches, the lights don't work, but the candles turn on. Kind of cheesy stuff like that. The acting is as is, is horrid as I expected. Um, the main actor... What's his name? Richard Benjamin. This fucking dude. He tries his best to be funny. There was a couple parts I chuckled. Um, but overall, he's flat and boring. The mom is boring. I hate the fucking little kid. The um, the little kid is like, he. I expect him to be like right out of like some 80s sitcom. Um, and I just wanted to punch him in his face. I just couldn't stand him. And he's the one we follow through the most. Because he's the one who reads the book. And he talks to his, you know... Father, there's a scene where he tells his dad that there's a monster in his room. Father comes and tries to tell the kid there's no monster, but the monster's hiding behind the dad the whole time. It could have been funny, but it wasn't. It was just really bad. The humor in this is just so bad. And the, the daughter doesn't have much. Except the one scene that I remembered from seeing when I was a kid. The reason why I remember seeing this as a kid was the one scene is the daughter, you know, she's get, taking a bath. And the thing is, you know, she's only, I didn't realize this, you know, at the time when I first saw it, when I first saw it, I was probably like six or ten or whatever, and I'm like, ooh, girl getting, you know, getting ready to take a bath. But the thing is, earlier, when she's taking a bath, you know, the, the director is like a real perv here. He focuses on her taking off her shirt, slowly taking her underwear down and getting, there's no nudity, which is because this is PG. There's no nudity, but she's, you know, slowly focusing on her taking her underwear down, pro, you know, letting the audience know that, you know, she's naked, she's getting in the tub, and the thing is, earlier on, she talks about how she hasn't gone to college yet. So this girl, at least, you know, the character is in high school, so why, how awkward can you make this, you know, us watching this film, a young girl, a high school girl, Focusing on her getting all butt ass naked and, cl and climbing into the tub. I'm just, that, you know, it, it was it was really uncomfortable watching that film or watching that scene. And this is the scene I remember because as she's in the tub, you see, like, you know, or as she's getting ready in the tub, you see, like, this shark fin, you know, just like a jaws rip off going back and forth in the bubble, in the bubbles, in the bubble bath. And um, basically, you find out when she gets in the tub. When she gets in the tub, um, the creature from the Black Lagoon pops up from the tub, scares the shit out of her, and basically asks in his own fish language, um, we're looking for a book, have you seen it? And it's just a horrible scene, it's an awkward scene, she's running around in a towel, I'm just like, I don't want to watch this. 
And I just thought of something. This says it came out in 1981. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street didn't come out until like 84. So where the f how the fuck did they pay homage to the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street house? Maybe I'm wrong, but that house looked exactly like it. But hmm. Anyways, back to that fucking scene. That was just very awkward, very unfunny. And speaking of unfunny and stupid, excuse me, the way that the, the creature from the Black Lagoon, or that fish creature, or whatever the fuck I want to call him, looks, every single monster you can tell is just a dude in a suit. So they all look like, and unless this was intentional or not, they all look like if I went to like the local Halloween store and bought like a full suit, shitty, rubber, fake, horrible. So you can tell the budget of this was like 50 bucks. Um, and I don't mind, I don't mind shitty films, I don't mind low budget films, I fucking love Howard the Duck, I love Super Mario Brothers, you know, I'm an Uwe Boll fan, so that tells you something, I could not stand this film. Beers didn't help at all. Um, I did not like Jeffrey Tambor's performance as a vampire, and while he did basically the whole time when he was trying to get the book, it was get the book or bitch with his wife, and he, he just came off as a pussy. Um, I chuckled a couple times. There's a, there's a scene where eventually there's a Halloween party at the house, and Fat Van Helsing has to play bartender. He's kind of funny, but after all, he just becomes annoying. Um, let's see what else. Oh, there's a final scene. The final scene finally where Dracula, or Jeffrey Tambor, vampire, meets up with Fat Van Helsing, and they have a stare down. And they're looking at each other, and they're staring each other down, they're trying to be intimidating, and they're using magical powers. But every time they're looking at each other, there's like a foghorn, or, you know, just weird trumpet noises, or something like that. I was just waiting for Jeffrey Tambor to look at Fat Van Helsing, like, open his mouth, and like an elephant would trumpet. It was really bad, really horrible, really stupid. Um, I know they were trying, they were trying to go for over-the-top funny here, but, and I'm no fucking writer, but man, this was bad. This was horrible. This was awkward. This was boring. There is nothing redeemable about this film. Um, what else? I know I wanted to say one more thing. Ah, uh, and I fucking forgot. You know what? Because there's nothing memorable about this film either. And I know once I shut off my fucking iPad, I'm going to remember, oh, I should have ripped on it for this. Um, but I can't. Oh, God. What did I mention? You know, bad costumes, horrible effects. Oh, the cop. Their neighbor is a cop, okay? Yeah. Hold on. If you've seen my reviews before, or seen anything where I've mentioned cops in horror movies, especially when I bring up Halloween 5, eventually now I'm going to have to review that film because one of my buddies talked about how uh, how much that Halloween 5 has some redeeming qualities. So no, it doesn't. And I'll get to that in my review. However... We're talking about bumbling cops. Well, this dumb asshole, he hears some screaming coming from the house. And this is right after the uh, the creature from Black Lagoon shows up in uh, the underage girl's bathtub. And he's about ready to break down the door to save her. But while he's doing this, the soundtrack turns into like that, what is it, when, the, when someone plays a bugle to um, charge? And he runs into the door. I'm just like, oh. Why do you have to give the dumb fucking cop a fucking stupid theme when he's trying to rescue? And he, oh, I hate it when they show cops in films being fucking jackasses and retards. And that's how uh, Halloween 5 will be when I talk about it. But again, I'm not talking about that. I'm sadly talking about Saturday the 14th. It's not helping. Anyways, I'm cutting this short because I don't want to talk about this film anymore. Um, yeah, sorry. I really, really gave it a shot. I went into this with low, low expectations, and I still left disappointed, bored. Um, you know, I should have drank, like, whiskey or, or vodka with this. Um, not the worst film I have ever seen. That would probably still be, you know, A Million Ways to Die in the West by, you know, Seth MacFarlane, that fuckface. But um, still, this is definitely, definitely close to the bottom of the barrel. Um, I do not recommend this film at all. I don't care if you're a fan of bad movies. Like I said, 
excuse me, I went through with the list of fan movies I love. They're total shit. I mean, I love Armageddon with Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck. Don't tell me that's a good movie. I love it. I could not do Saturday the 14th. There's a sequel called Saturday the 14th Strikes Again. Won't be seeing it. Oh, one thing I did want to say. There is kind of a twist ending that I did not see coming. And I thought that was somewhat cool. But again, the execution was... Um, so yeah, I'm done talking about Shitter Day the 14th. Um, I won't be watching it again. Blame myself. But you know what? It is what it is. So, whatever you do, please avoid Saturday the 14th. Unless you're a glutton for punishment. Like I am. Alright. Thanks for listening to me drunkenly ramble about this crap movie. Um, if you like what you see, check out my other stuff. Um, please subscribe to my channel. That whole spiel, I'm not going to go through it anyways. You know, if you like my stuff, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't. Whatever. Um, but yeah, in the end, I will say cheers. Sadly, I'm out of this. Um, and yeah, just... God, this movie was bad. All right. You know what, I, fuck it, I think I'm going to go watch like Monster Squad or something to wash the taste of this out of my mouth. So, see you later.